So I'd just like to, to start off with, uh, for those who were here, or not actually here in Stuttgart back in 2008, it was a silicon workshop, and Mr. Michael Goldstein had a four, the first, ever first 450 presentation. I was uh, not a speaker before him, but before him, and I thought it was a big crowd, and I thought, oh, now I understand, didn't want to listen to 200, they want to listen to 450. So five years on, today we're all talking about 450 millimeter wafers, the question is, what will be topics in five years from now? We'll see. So, um, my talk today is about polymers, but it's not just going to be about polymers. We're looking at uh, lessons learned from 300 millimeter, because currently 300 millimeter is still growing, and we need to take advantage of the development of 300 into 450. And we also need to look at 450 and bring it back into 300. Um, second part would be advanced polymers. And then I'm going to mention uh, purification and purge, some of the purge results. So lessons learned from 300 millimeter. What we see today is we have the, uh, the shipping box, the FOSPI. We see this unit becoming more frequently used inside fabs, not just specifically for shipping, transporting, and protecting wafers from A to B, they actually go inside fabs. And uh, for 300 millimeter, there wasn't the intent. There was never really the design behind it. So well, we still have to tweak and, and do customer solution for 300 millimeter. And if you look at 450, that has, has already been addressed. Um, what we have here is uh, a very good uh, section of current semi-standards. I would say semi is, is really good at putting forward the standards, and for 450, the standards are already in place. Um, one item which is different is we have the E159. It's the 450 millimeter standard for the MAC. MAC is the multi-application carrier. That carrier would be enabled to go inside a fab, especially between front end, back end, and to electrical testing. This is a specific uh, standard for the FOSPI, but the MAC is the wafer shipper. So uh, the difference there is the door closure force. If you use a FOSPI, you need twice the door closure force. In a MAC, it can go on any FOOP load ports. So that's one of the big advantages. So they will help OEMs, instead of developing specific uh, load ports, you can use the FOOP load port for a wafer shipper. And here we can see the, uh, the MAC on the receive uh, technology load port. Um, second step is we, we want to optimize the equipment inter interoperability. We want to avoid all the differences between a FOOP and a MAC. So if you're looking here, you see the, the top flange, you have the door housing, kinematic coupling plate. Uh, these are all exactly the same. Anytime you have a difference in a design, you, you can create issues in a fab. Um, I'm sure some of you, at one stage in your life, bought one or two of these. <laughs> I'm not going to say you're going to put in a FOOP. Uh, what you do is you probably have in the vehicle, in the car. Car is a vehicle. You drive around with you. Uh, and you might have people inside your car been smoking or you have, um, it's a scent. Instead of buying one of these, I will use the air conditioning. In the semiconductor world, you talk about purge. You purge your vehicle. And why do you purge? Because in a vehicle, you have materials like polymers. You have plastic parts, which is polymers. They absorb and desorb molecules. You also have fabrics, which does exactly the same. So I'm going to talk about um, a study. We have a Cialetti. We have three made, major uh, research institutes in Europe. Cialetti is one of them. Um, this ongoing study is to uh, evaluate the polymer absorption and desorption factor. So what we do is we initially contaminate the FOOP with hydrofluoric acid and 
we, we measure the desorption factor. First we measure the absorption, and then we measure the desorption. We also measure the fluoride content. Fluoride is a very common uh, chemical uh, contaminant in fabs, and we see those on wafers. So what we do is we start off with standard silicon wafers and see and measure the fluoride content on those wafers. And here's just a couple of examples of uh, issues we see in the fab. We got a titanium fluoride, the crystal growth, titanium nitride, uh, corrosion on aluminum lines, and copper vias. Corrosion can most likely be affected due to uh, high moisture content, and I'm going to address this as well. What we see is a chain. We see the airborne molecular contamination, um, which could be from the process steps. It could well be from processed wafers inserted in a FOOP or a MAC. And because you use, if it's a single process, once the 25th wafer is back in a FOOP, the number first wafer has been there for quite a while. So all this off-gassing, out-gassing or off-gassing of molecules is contaminating the inside environment in a FOOP. Um, and the FOOP uh, polymer matrix will absorb these contaminants and later, over time, release those contaminants back into the environment, which would affect wafers. Um, in our study, we have three different FOOP platforms. We got the A300 FOOP, we got the Spectra FOOP, as well as the F300. So here we have a uh, the different type of uh, polymers. We have the EBM CNT, which is integrous barrier material with carbon on tubes. Below it is pure EBM, which is uh, without carbon on tubes, and have PI. PI is a flame retardant 911 uh, resin. Then we have the standard PC. PC is polycarbonate. We can also have the PC with the carbon powder. So we used uh, all of those in our experiment. Um, I'm not going to go into this uh, study in details because uh, I haven't got the time today, but there is a published paper available, and the last slide will show you where you can find it. What we did was uh, we equilibration uh, of uh, all the FOOPs. It, see, I left this uh, clean room. We did add uh, 10 microliter or two percentage, uh, two, uh, percentage of HF in a little uh, bowl, uh, we let it out off gas for 24 hours, and then we used a purge step. After that, we did uh, we storage wafer as well as we measured out gassing and leaching. The the final result was not just on silicon wafers; we had coated wafers as well. So I want to show you the the results, the final result in this study. Um, we we will continue with this project. It's gone on for three years, and we have another couple of years to go. What you will see here is we have the aluminum copper wafer and also the copper wafer. And here you have the fluoride, uh, fluoride ions, square centimeter. And this is, on this scale, you have the time in days. So in a pure polycarbonate-based FOOP, you have the highest amount of fluoride fluorine ions on the wafers. The best polymer is the EBM CNT, which has the lowest amount. Whoops. There you go. And it's the same result for the copper wafers. The difference between those two, which was uh, interesting result is the copper wafer itself is more sensitive to fluoride ions than aluminum copper wafers. Um, in this study, we used the, uh, the standard relative humidity, which is roughly 40%. Uh, next step will be to see if we can change the humidity inside over time to see how the contamination would behave. So, short about purification and some purge results. Um, 
For 300 millimeter, as you know, there is three different food platforms. There is additional foods out on the market. There is not a semi-standard location for the purge. Um, for 450, this is already in place. So you have the semi-E 158, where we have the, the rear purge modules and the front. So semi-standard is in place, and that should enable the industry to all find and design your tools for purge. This is the, um, yes, a short little picture of the, the flow rate. We say 150 liter per minute is the maximum flow rate per port. So looking at the two inlets in the back in the rear um, and two exhaust in the front. We have, in addition, uh, diffusers. It's called advanced purge. So what diffusers does do is they penetrate the airflow on a, on a horizontal level in between wafers. If you have a standard basic purge, it will go around the FOOP, around, sorry, around the slot 25 wafer, will not be able to penetrate in between each individual wafer. This is a result of uh, uh, driving down the moisture. So here we have a purge step. We're using 150 uh, liter per minute nitrogen. And this is the difference between the polycarbonate and EBM material. So you can see the, uh, the red scale. This is the polycarbonate. So what we do is we purge down and then we stop, stop purging and we measure the, the relative humidity recovering curve. So this is the time it takes inside a FOOP to, to, to see how, how fast the moisture content is uh, increasing inside a FOOP. So UBM has here, because it's a barrier material, a large advantage. So you can keep the moisture content very, very low for a long period of time. And this is just one purge step. If you want to keep it even lower for a much longer time, you just do the uh, continuous purge. We, call, we also call it trickle purge. The trickle purge in this case, we use five liter per minute. So you start off with a, a high purge, then you switch, you use a low purge. For low purge, you can keep the moisture content very, very low for in infinity. Um, I know the challenge is uh, queue time. Sometimes you do have to transfer or transport a FOOP, and there will be areas where you can't purge. But for advanced nodes, for very sensitive structures, purge is going to be a requirement. So, so where would you purge, or where would you actually clean the FOOP? Um, you have the standard DI water cleaner. Um, we used to talk about particles. I think particles are still with us to some degree, but airborne molecular contamination, AMCs, is becoming more and more critical. So to get rid of those, you need to purge. And uh, it's, it will be a combination of DI, standard DI water cleaning systems, uh, purge using XCDA, nitrogen, maybe even just CDA to some, some extent. Um, if you use XC XCDA, for example, extreme clean dry air, you remove the moisture, but you still have the oxygen. So I'm, I'm curious to see how much oxygen might have an effect on, on the effect on, on wafer level. Uh, the purge on the load port, you can do it in the, in the stocker. Um, we also have here a, a little getter media. This actually absorbs moisture. It does take up a slot in a, in a FOOP. So my short summary will be that the, the MAC multi-application carrier, which is a shipping box, can also be used as a FOOP to some extent and penetrate deeper in the 450 millimeter manufacturing. Advanced FOOP polymers will be required for next generation technology nodes. Um, looking at the 300 millimeter uh, manufacturing today, 
I would say 80 to 90% of all the FOOPs we make today going out with EBM CNT. It takes barrier material with carbon nanotubes. And I think carbon nanotubes we mentioned before, and it's going to be more used in the 450 uh, volume manufacturing. Purification, yes, we do need purification to prevent airborne molecular contamination and increased yield. And global cooperation, we mentioned before, be one of the drivers to take this to the next level. And this is just the reference to the paper and some of my colleagues we've been working with and we're still uh, looking forward to uh, complete the Cialetti project in the next couple of years. Thank you.